Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations and this week we're talking everything copper. With a little bit of making on the side. Today we're making a side table and a serving tray with the basics being on how to bend and work with copper pipe. And I'll start out by saying I am no expert, but I wanted to put together a video showing you all the things that I have learned while working with the material. So let's start by talking about the pipe itself. It comes in two sizes. You've got half inch and you've got three quarter inch pipe. And this is where it gets confusing for us Aussies. Once they start talking about fittings, everyone starts talking about millimeters. So when you're dealing with half inch pipe, you're gonna need 50 15 mil fittings and when you're dealing with three quarter inch pipe you're going to need 20 mil fittings. Now when it comes to tools I would suggest you pick yourself up one of these pipe cutting tools. They're around about 15 to 17 dollars from Bunnings and they are a great way to quickly cut the pipe and we'll go through the basics of cutting the pipe a little bit later on in this video. Now to bend the pipe you're going to need a pipe bender and if you're anything like me I thought you could pick up any pipe bender and it would bend the pipe but you need to match the size of the pipe bender to to the pipe that you're bending. I'll leave a link in the description below to the one that I picked up from eBay as I managed to find a set of both half and three quarter inch pipe bending for around about 60 or $70. Now I say let's get to building and get that timber ready to turn it into a side table and a serving tray and then we can go through the fun stuff which is bending the copper pipe. I've run all the timber through the thicknesser, so now we're up to the point where I'm gonna cut all the rounded edges off. And I'm just using random selection of hardwood that I had hanging around in the workshop. So we'll cut all the rounded edges off and then we'll get to glue up. Now we wait a couple of hours for the glue to dry. Our panels are over on the other side of the workshop drying and while they're doing their thing, let's talk about how you can bend and cut the copper pipe. And we're gonna start by making a stand for our serving tray. And as a visual aid, we want our end product to look like this, which is some three quarter inch pipe down into a reducer. And then we're gonna bend the half inch pipe a little bit later on. First off, we need to cut our three quarter inch pipe. So you're gonna need your pipe cutter. I've marked 70 mil up on the pipe and I would suggest using a Sharpie just because it shows up really easily on the pipe. And you wanna pick whether or not you're gonna cut on the inside or the outside of the Sharpie line so that everything is consistent. Yeah, your cutter has some bearings which is where the pipe can sit in and I'll bring you in closer here to show you what I'm talking about. You're going to bring the pipe cutter down so that it's got a little bit of pressure on the pipe. You're going to rotate once and quarter turn after each turn so that you can cut all the way through the pipe and slowly but surely make your way around until you've cut the pipe. And we'll need four of these for our stands. All right, I've got my four pieces cut for the bottom of my stand and we're now up to the point where we can start to bend copper. But it's not as simple as just throwing it straight into the pipe bender and going hell for leather. You need to put something in the pipe to stop it from kinking. And a lot of people online say you should use sand. But for me, the sand that I could find was from Bunnings, which was sand for a sand pit and it's quite wet and you want it to be dry. So we tested a whole bunch of items and to me, caster sugar worked the best and you can get this from Woolies for like 99 cents. So I would suggest using caster sugar. So we need to tape one end obviously because we don't want the sugar to go out. We're gonna fill the pipe with, with the sugar and then we can start to talk about how we're gonna bend it. Our copper pipe is filled with caster sugar, so we're now up to the fun part where we can start to bend it. But before we start bending, let's talk about the pipe bender itself. I've got the smaller one here of the two, which is ready to go. And some things to note on the front of the pipe bender, it has some markings, which is degrees of which you can bend the pipe to. The top also moves, or this top arm also moves, which will come into play later on when you wanna start things exactly at zero and bend them around to a certain degree. So I'm going to start by putting my pipe in and getting it 
to zero and then we're gonna bend it, our first bend, around to 90. But I'll get you close up and then we'll talk through exactly how you bend it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and open our pipe bender and we're gonna get our copper pipe here and put it in. I'm gonna open this right up. Now I know that I want my copper pipe to start right here on the edge and you can't go any lower than that because it needs to sit up against this as you're pushing to actually bend the pipe. You want to bend this guy around here. Now this arm here and this here, you want the two to meet at zero before you start so that you can make sure that it is level and that you start at zero and when you bend around to 90, it is a true 90. So we're going to go ahead here and get this locked in and then keeping it as flat as you can to the ground I find I pull this arm around towards me and you want to bend just ever so slightly past the, where you want to be. So I want to be at 90, I want to be ever so past 90 because it does spring back slightly after you finish bending it. So we'll squeeze it here around to the 90, ever so slightly past the 90 and then you can release this handle. Now, when you take your measurements for the next bend, I would suggest you take them while it is in the bender from the 90, especially if you are making multiple of these. What you can do is get repeatable from measuring from the same spot before you take it out of the bender, and then you could be measuring anywhere from along here. So I would suggest you do it while it's in the bender. Now, I know for my stand, I wanna measure five centimeters or 50 mil out from the 90. So we're gonna go ahead and measure it, and then we can bend the next section. Now that I've measured my 50 mil, I can bring that mark around to the zero and make our next bend. All right, this is where it gets a little bit tricky and where you wanna try and keep it level. Now that we've marked our 50 mil mark and I want to put that in zero, it is very easy for this to become no longer flat. So what you wanna do is whatever this measurement is here, for me, it's around about 12 mil, so I've got myself a piece of plywood. You wanna put that under so that when you're bending the next pipe, you are holding this down onto the plywood. That will keep it level and in plane as you make the next bend. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up for the next bend and we can bend it back around. And again, we're going just a fraction past because it will spring back. And there you have it. You've got yourself a bent piece of copper, which currently looks like a cane, but we're gonna cut it and that'll be the first section of our stand. Let's get this pipe cut. Now keep in mind that sugar is going to go everywhere. You know it is completely clear when you can blow from one end out to the other really clear. So now we've got that, we need to rinse and repeat and make another one of these. All right, and like that, you've got two of them. However, if you do get sugar stuck inside, because that does happen, I've just been lucky that that hasn't happened. Get yourself a straw or even a screwdriver. You can stick it down the pipe and loosen that and just keep tapping it. It will eventually come out. We've now got all the fittings that we need to make our stands and let's talk about reducers or fittings for a moment. If you're going to do anything like this, batching out or making multiple of them, I would suggest getting it from an online plumbing store. For example, this reducer fittings from Bunnings is around about $3, $3.50 each, and I needed four of them. Online from a website called Online Plumbing Sales, which I'll link in the description below, they were 90 cents. So considerably cheaper and especially when you're making multi them of them like I was this was a much much more viable way to go now to actually glue everything together everyone online suggests they use this Gorilla Glue I absolutely hate it and I will probably never use it again that's how much I hate it so when you put this stuff on it oozes glue out that then becomes like yellow foamy stuff that you then have to spend hours trying to get off the copper pipe I would go down the route, which is what I have done and will use now, which is Gorilla Clear 
grip. This stuff is as good or better in terms of gluing than this stuff and it is clear, it doesn't ooze out uh, after the time. So I think this is much, much better. So that is what I'm gonna use to glue everything together. Now for the stands that I am making in particular, I wanted a wider base so I didn't wanna just put a copper cap onto it just to stop it from rocking that little bit more and give it more surface area. So I put dowels at the bottom of mine which actually has a smaller dowel which goes into the copper pipe just for stability and that means it just stops the serving tray from rocking left to right. So you could just put end caps on them but I'm gonna go with that dowel option. So now we're up to the point where I can start to glue these all together and then we can probably start to talk about the copper pipe for the side table which I've never actually done so we're going to learn together because we're going to start to bend pipe in different directions so let's get this glued up and then we can get onto the side table. All right, I've just realized in looking at the design for the side table that I was totally overcomplicating it. I don't actually need to bend a copper pipe in different directions. It's really quite similar to what I actually just made, only on a bigger scale. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the bottom U of the stand because I can then take everything from that. And really, at the end of the day, as long as I am measuring from the same point each time, I'm gonna start to get consistent turns. Now something to keep in mind or something that we have just calculated is when you're using the copper pipe, when you're using three quarter for example, each 90 degree bend adds around about four to five centimeters to your overall dimension. So if you wanted something that is say 300, which is what we want our bottom section to be of 300, I need to actually take off about four centimeters on either side of that and that's what I need to measure from my 90 when I'm measuring. So I'll be measuring 220 after that first bend and then it should give me overall width of around about 300. It's not going to be perfect because it can't be, but that's what we're aiming for. So I'm going to go ahead and get those cut or get those bent and then we can start to actually bring to life the side table and the serving tray by putting them through the thickness, start sanding them and finishing them and then we can glue in the copper. Something that I just found helpful that I want to share with you that I have discovered. When you are finished with this and you want to make sure it is the right or the same height on both sides, get a level and have it sit up against this. And then this is just a scrap piece of wood where I've marked what 500 mil is, which is how high I want the legs to be. And then I can mark them on both sides because it's really hard to get a measurement that's consistent with the bend. So if you have the level, you can then mark them off and then you know they are exactly the same. So just a little tip for you. Now we're up to the point where I'm gonna take the boards out of clamps, put them through the thicknesses, sand them up, shape them, do all of those fun things to them and then we can get the copper into place. The best part of any woodworking is putting timber through the thicknesser and bringing it to life. Let's see what we can change this into. That is what I call a great finish. A little bit of light sanding and she's ready for finish. I finished shaping all of the timber and for the serving tray I've just cut out holes at each end which will accept the copper and it will sit in on the reducers and that'll stop it from falling to the ground and sit it up off the ground which is exactly what we want. For the side table I used some blue tape to tape from the top around to the bottom so that I could match exactly where the holes were coming in and out so that it will look like the copper is continuing through the timber. So that's all ready to be sanded. When it comes to finishing the timber, really simple, just gonna sand everything up to 320 grit, pop the grain partway through with some water, and then we'll apply finish to those two things. When it comes to the copper, it's a little bit different. If yours is like mine, it'll already have started to patina, but that's okay, you can get it back to a nice shine. 
there is some things you're going to need. From the hardware store, you can pick up steel wool in some very fine grit, and I also use some 600 grit sandpaper. And I'm gonna use the 600 grit sandpaper to get rid of all of the patina and start to shine up the copper, and then I'll come back through with the steel wool to bring it to that really nice shine. And to stop it from patining in the future, I'm going to just use some clear satin spray to actually just protect it and I'll apply maybe three, four coats of that just to protect it and that'll stop it from patining in the future. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the timber all finished and then we can turn our attention to the copper and get that finished as well and then we can wrap up the project. about my failure for a second. I glued this in with the glue that I recommended, which does work. However, it is not sticking to the timber very well. And I don't know if it's a combination or it could be a combination of all these things. When I did the glue up, it was 45 degrees in the workshop, which is crazy hot. So that could have affected it. I also didn't rough up the ends of the copper, which I think is another thing that could be affecting it. So it was just totally unsteady as soon as I took it out of clamps. So. I am going to go back to the glue that I absolutely hate, but like it says on its tag, it bonds virtually everything and hope that this is going to fix it. I am also got some wooden dowel here, which I'm going to glue down into the piping, which is going to aid in strength. And I also am going to create like my own little mini flange that's going to go on here because I think the other problem is it didn't have enough meat for the copper pipe to go down into the timber. So I'm going to do all combination of all those things to try and fix it. And then hopefully I get a really sturdy base and something that doesn't rock. Let's try that out and see what happens. Let's see how this goes. I have used a knife and a chisel to remove all of that glue, because as you know, it is my most hated glue, but it has worked because this is a whole lot sturdier than it was before. These wooden flanges that I've made have really made the difference. Let's have a look. I still have to glue the end cap on here and I've got to put the frame across the top here. But other than that, that is really good and a lot sturdier than it was before. So I'm really happy with that. If I had to do this project over again, I would probably use three quarter inch pipe instead of half inch pipe. I just think that would have been even sturdier again, but I'm really happy with how this has turned out. So I'm gonna put on these finishing touches and finish my chatting here. I hope you have liked this video. If you have, help me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons and I'll see you on the next one.